Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to a very special project. This is my 100th YouTube upload. So, yay for me. Yahoo for me! Yeah! Yeah! 100 episodes in the books. I am stoked. Also want to give a huge shout out to Doug and Eric from d and &E in the Garage. Eric just sent me a brand new laptop. This thing is juiced up. It's going to handle high definition videos. Let me know if you notice a difference. It's also going to save me so much time. I could process and edit videos on the go. More videos, more content coming to you a lot faster. So that's awesome. I'm super stoked about that. So I'm repping my Bricks Are a Privilege, Not a Right, d in the Garage, and Project 10H collaboration t shirt. Go check out Doug and Eric on d in the Garage. Grab yourself some gear, support them too. They are awesome. So on for today's video, we are going to be installing, hopefully by the end of this video, a Harbor Freight 17 by 10 carport. Let's check it out. All right, guys, here it is. Here we go. My Harbor Freight portable car canopy, 10 foot by 17 foot. This was my President's Day sale special. I don't know. I think I had a coupon. It might have been the President's Day, so I'm not sure how I paid. Uh, it might have been $200-ish, but... Um, uh, I don't know. We'll see if we can get our money's worth out of this thing. It's going to be probably, uh, in all honesty, more of a, a parts garage instead of uh, a carport. I'm going to be stripping down my Jeeps, and I like to store the parts out of the weather. Um, here we go. Let's just take a look at the dimensions. Six-foot opening at the top, eight-foot opening at the bottom. It stands about nine-foot tall at the peak, and, of course... 10 wide by 17 long. So this will give me a lot of room to store parts out of the weather during my Jeep projects. Um, this is going to sit on my crushed RCA part of the slab. I'm going to do work on the actual concrete and then uh, the storage will be on that uh, the RCA. So can't wait to get it installed. This box is huge. It's been taking up so much room and um, I guess I'll give it a good review um, as it stands the test of time. So before we get this installed, I gotta go back there and I gotta finish up some work out there. I'm gonna take those, uh, those wood planks out of the Grievous, get them to where they need to be so we can finally install this bad boy and start working on my XJ. Finally. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you my finished product. Yay! Check this out. This is what it looked like before. <laughs> yeah, boy. Three giant oaks taken down. After three months of work, I dropped all the trees, split them up, stacked them nice and neatly into my nice wood pile. Then I had the yard graded, break this all out, and then I did what the good book said. I planted my foundation, or I'm going to plant it, on stone and not sand. Right here I got seven and a half yards of crushed RCA, nice and tamped into a 32 by 12 framed slab extension. So here we go guys, 
this is it, man. I am so happy. This is done. I don't have to worry about this yard anymore. Just gonna throw down some grass seed and uh, let nature do its thing. So now it's time to assemble the Harbor Freight carport. Let's dig into this thing. Come on, baby, open. Ooh. All right, guys, if you jump right to the back, we have a parts list and an assembly diagram. So that's huge right there. If you don't know how to read, you can probably just go ahead and look at this picture and then assemble your thing. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to read this thing as best as I can, and uh, I'll take you through the instructions. So here we go. Looks like we're gonna assemble the roof area first. All right, let's do it. So all right, we got our roof joints laid out. These are all uh, the A's and B's. Now we're gonna go with the pole number fours and we're gonna connect all these little guys. All right, now we're gonna go ahead with our number threes. We're gonna connect all these crossbars. Number threes. All right, guys, we got the roof assembly together. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but I can see the writing on the wall. Um, not to knock Harbor Freight's sterling reputation for quality, but these things are very annoying. The poles keep popping out, so I'm gonna nip that in the bud right now. I'm gonna go to Home Depot. I'm gonna get myself some hex head self tappers, uh, preferably stainless, so I can zip these things in and they won't keep popping out on me while I lift up the roof and try to put in the support poles. So. Um, Gonna take a quick trip, catch you in a minute. Yeah, buddy, self-drilling metal screws, metal to metal, number eight diameter, 280 count, high torque. All right, so these are half inch, they should do the trick, and uh, they're not stainless, but oh well, should do the job. Got our self-tappers. Now, the beauty of these things is these are a quarter inch head, and right here, I got my DeWalt impact gun. And um, this is a quarter inch bit. And come on, focus. It's got a magnet right here. So the magnet will allow me to not drop these all over my slab. <laughs> so, all right, I'm just gonna punch these right in. Nice and easy. So I'm gonna put in all my self tappers and then on to the next step. All right, all my self-tappers are in. I strategically located them, so in case I ever needed to take them out while the tarp was on, I could still access them, so they're all on the sides and in the insides. And uh, yes, I did keep them in my mouth while I was putting them in. Um, the saliva actually lubes the screws. <laughs> Don't do that at home. Don't blame me. I'm just a monkey with a toolbox, right? <laughs> so, on to the next step. All right, up next, looks like we're gonna put up the uh, the legs, the wall studs, so here we go. Uh, ones and twos on the side. All right, now you can see the shorter twos on the corners, they're dangling, uh, that means they're gonna get these elbows and um, the longer ones in the middle, are gonna get these feet, so pop these on right now. Come on now. <laughs> that is exactly why we need those self tappers. Now it wants us to square up the frame so uh, the sides are 10 foot 2 inches apart and of course you got to make it even on the diagonal and then once it's where we want it all squared up we're going to go ahead and sink in the anchors and then they give us little cables with uh, U-bolts 
U-clamps, I guess, that we could uh, fasten down the cables when this is anchored. But before that, I'm going to go put in some more self-tappers because this thing is flimsy AF. starting in my back corner and they give you these anchors you're supposed to kind of turn these into the ground um, I just <laughs> I just tamped down seven and a half yards of crushed RCA so this is gonna be really difficult so I thought of an idea I got my old uh, my big dog Dewalt and I got a 32 inch uh, 32 millimeter hex head uh, socket so I'm gonna try to ram this home with the Dewalt and uh, we'll see if we can get this secured in the ground. So, cross your fingers. Wow, <laughs> that actually worked. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Is a better look at our anchor in the ground. Pretty good. I'm sure it'll tighten up as the uh, RCA packs. And I'll give it one more turn for good measure. And here is the little strips of uh, cable they give you. And they want you to just loop it in here. And then they provide these little U clamps. So we'll go ahead and slide these in. And I guess we'll cinch it up nice and tight. Bring it in as close as possible. The less slack the better, I suppose. All right, and here we go. We got the DeWalt Impact again, and this is a eight millimeter deep dish. So we'll tighten up this U-clamp. Just gonna alternate back and forth. Till she's snug. There we go. It's got some play, but that's how they want it. That'll have to do. Cool. Next piece they want on is the front, and the front has the zipper, so I'm going to find the peak, and I want you to loop this uh, scrapping over your, uh, your roof line and put it underneath this bar. So I'm going to have to disconnect my self-tapper, and then uh, we'll get this bad boy back on. And they want us to follow suit for the side two frame rails. Now we're going to use these included ratchet straps. We're going to untie this. We're going to strap this down to the corner. I'll tell you what, guys, this is and not fun to do in the wind. The wind pulled the strap all the way through and uh, well, I had to fish it back. Meanwhile, the whole time the wind was fighting me. So, yeah, you gotta do this? See if you got a buddy that can help you out. That would make a world of difference. All right, we loop this thing around the support bars like it said. We strap the uh, ratchets down in the corners, like it said, and we started uh, ratcheting this thing a little tighter. Just like it said, already strike one. Can't believe it. Look at this thing. Ripping already in the corners. Harbor Freight, not surprised. So, it's a little windy, yeah, not gonna lie. A little gust here and there, but come on, day one, shouldn't be ripping.
gee whiz. I have a feeling I'm gonna be buying some new tarps in the near future. But all right, gonna go do the backside now. The backside. All right guys, so I just finished putting on the back side of this tent. This Harbor Freight fabric is really, really cheap. And when you tighten down these uh, ratchet straps that pull this strap nice and tight, it just starts cutting this fabric. So um, I came up with a mod in order to stop this from tearing. I took my, uh, <laughs> I jumped off my first mod, uh, these self tappers right here. And uh, I put a nice sturdy zip tie, like a quarter inch thick zip tie, right underneath that little screw head. So this is nice and tight against the pull now, and it won't rip out. So I did the front already. You can see how it's a nice 90 degree angle over there in each corner. That works really nice. And you can see here how this side is just tearing against the fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two zip ties against these, kind of like this, and uh, insert footage now. Now it looks like we've gotta lay our top canopy over this thing, making sure our holes for the side rails are uh, sticking up. And I guess we'll insert the side rails, We'll throw this over the top, catch it, <laughs> attach the other side. Okie dokie. Alright, we are inside my canopy, my carport, my tent, whatever you want to call it. So, what I'm going to do now is insert the side posts over here. I inserted the other side uh, side post first, so I could throw over this top tarp with, with it being weighted on that side. Um, I'm going to put these in now, it might be difficult because the wind is blowing. It isn't. That the wind is blowing, it's what the wind is blowing. Ugh, you know what? To keep this thing from going airborne, I'm going to insert a clamp right away. So here we go. This clamp is going to pinch on those uh, vertical posts and screw right in to the side posts. It's going to slide the bolt. And this bracket, the bracket in here, you know, just like so. Put the other side in, and I'm gonna clamp right under my nifty little zip tie trick. So I'm just gonna hand tighten everything now and move on down the line. All right, guys, we are almost done. Yay. So uh, we're going to take this strap. This goes up and around like a, like an arch over the uh, front and the rear. So you're going to have to untie this bad boy. Got to give it some slack here. Pull it down. And we're going to do another ratchet strap. All right, let's tighten the other side. OK. 
Okay, leave that just like that. And I'm gonna look for uh, equal tension on all four corners. All right, we got our front panels on, our top panel on, and we got the back panel on. All the corners are secure. I'm pretty sure it's gonna need some uh, adjusting and tensioning along the line, down the line, but here we go. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure my roof line, the peak is nice and straight, like so. And I'm gonna pull down nice and tight on these crossbars and give these a nice fastening with uh, the old 14 millimeter. So, push down and zip her in. <laughs> that ain't going nowhere. All right guys, the straps are tightened, the bolts are fastened, everything seems to be good on this thing. Inside is looking great. Everything's exactly the way I want it to be. Um, 17 by 10, not bad. Got my nice crushed RCA gravel floor. Um, it's gonna be perfect for storing stuff. Um, here is what they include if you're going to drill uh, into concrete. They give you concrete anchors. I don't need it. Um, I got the feet just resting on the RCA. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll pour some footers and, and strap these in. I don't know. We'll see. Don't need to do it now. So that's it. That's the inside. Let me, uh, let me flip the viewer for you real quick. There we go. Inside of the carport. All right. Now, let us look at the outside for the first time. <laughs> what does this thing look like? Uh, let's open up the zipper. If I can. There we go. Ah. Hey, it's almost nighttime. Sun is setting on the day, and we are done. So, here we are. Check this out. Very cool, guys. Very cool. So, when you uh, open this thing up, you can uh, roll this tarp up, and you can uh, Velcro it up here. I think what I'm going to do is put a... Uh, a PVC uh, pole in here just so I could roll it up easier and then I'm thinking like a, like a coat hanger just so I could click it on so I don't have to worry about messing with the velcro I don't care if I have something dangling maybe I'll dangle it from the inside it just seems easier so cool guys we are done yeah all right guys that's gonna do it for the Harbor Freight carport project overall I'm loving it not too bad for uh, 200 bucks um, pretty easy install. If you're gonna do this, I would recommend uh, take your Saturday, prepare your yard, do what you gotta do with the uh, concrete or whatever you want to use as a base, and then uh, start nice and early Sunday. Grab a buddy, grab some beers, and uh, it'll be a lot easier to put this thing together. Um, I did it by myself. I had a little help from the little kids, but uh, not too bad. Um, you gotta use uh, a tape measure, obviously, to square it up. Uh, this whole ladder here to get to the high spots. Um, I also used the, um, what do you call those things? <laughs> the self-tappers. That was huge. I'm really glad I did that. I popped in the self-tappers on every joint and that held that thing together. Also the, uh, the zip tie mod, keeping it from uh, tearing in the corners because Harbor Freight, you know? This stuff probably ain't gonna last. So um, I'm already planning on getting a tarp. I'm gonna use a tarp to put over this, like a, a brown tarp, I guess. Uh, as big and as thick as I can to give this thing some extra support and a uh, little camouflage so you don't see a bright yellow thing so whatever um, make sure you use the uh, 32 uh, millimeter socket to drive in those anchors that was huge uh, I would have spent all day trying to drive those into the ground but um, overall not bad not bad at all uh, so I guess that's it this is the part where I say like and subscribe catch you on the next project and peace but uh, something is really troubling my heart right now. The condition of our country is just awful. So uh, could we get a moment of silence for this country? And um, guys, just do simple things. Just uh, love your neighbor like yourself. Thou shalt not steal and pray for your enemy, man. And, and these problems will go away. So 
that's all I want to say about that. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, catch you on the next one. Peace.